X3, X3, 7 X3. Now the most refreshing drink in the world, Orange Crush, presents the Green Hornet. O-R-A-N-G-E-C-R-U-S-H. Ice cold Orange Crush. It sparkles, it tingles. It makes you feel fresh again. It's the most refreshing drink in the world. Try it and see. Next time and all the time, ask for and be sure you get Orange Crush. And now, the Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game. Public enemies who try to destroy our America. With his faithful valet Cato, Brett Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Brett Reed in the thrilling adventure of Face in the Television. The Green Hornet strikes again. The adventures of the Green Hornet are brought to you recorded by the most refreshing drink in the world, Orange Crush. Delicious ice-cold Orange Crush is made with real fresh oranges with all its wonderful fresh fruit flavor sealed in that sunproof Orange Crush brown bottle. The exclusive brown bottle that keeps light out, keeps flavor in. Always look for that exclusive brown bottle and enjoy the one and only Orange Crush. The seedy-looking man whose armband bore the word Usher could hear the flight crowd cheering inside the arena. But after looking at his watch, he turned his attention to the rear door of the auditorium, the one that led into the alley. Billy said they'd be here right on the dock. Now they... I tell you, they are on the dock. We're here, Pop. Is everything okay? It should be. I'll look again, Phil. Just a minute. Yeah? Yeah, it's okay. There's nobody around. Good. All right, boys. Come right in. All right, sir. The man called Phil stepped inside, followed by three figures, well-dressed, yet fitted in their movement. The collars of their expensive overcoats were turned up, half covering their faces, and their hats were pulled out over their eyes. You're sure everything's set, Pop? As far as I know, all the dicks are in the front of the house. Nobody's around the entrance to your box. Which entrance do we use? Go right past the dressing room there. The next one marked end section 43. You can relax, boys. Everything's okay. Here you are, Pop. Yeah. Now, let's go, Pop. Good. Fifty bucks, golly. Thanks, Phil. You better wait for the next round to start before you go in. Brett Reed, young publisher of the Daily Sentinel, looked up as his private office door opened. His secretary, Lenore Case, entered. Mr. Reed, there's a woman outside with Axford who says she's the wife of Mickey Madigan. You know the old rum runner and racketeer? Well, Axford says you might be interested in hearing her story. Huh? Well, I thought Madigan wasn't allowed in this town. Isn't he supposed to quit the rackets and settle down at some resort out west? Yes, but you see, he and his wife have been separated for years. Or so she says. She seems to be a little upset, Mr. Reed. But... Well, I'm just telling you what Axford said. Well, maybe she has a story. Send her in, Miss Case. Michael Axford led Judy Madigan into Reed's office and sat her on a chair beside the publisher's desk. There were traces of faded beauty in her troubled face. But the tone of her voice had a coarseness that had evidently always been there. Well, here's what it's all about, Mr. Reed. I could swear I saw Mickey on television last night. On television? Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Madigan was looking at the fights, Reed. Tony Carpote and Joey Shevlin fought last night, you know. Yeah, it was a good scrap, too. What a saw buck on it. Now, tell Mr. Reed what you saw, Mrs. Madigan, or what you think you saw. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna. It was like this, Mr. Reed. I'm sitting there in this juice parlor thinking how, if that no good Mickey had sent me some of the dough he's supposed to send me, I'd be right there at the ringside instead of getting the fight on the second bound. Yes. And... Yeah, well, uh, right before the beginning of the last round in the semifinal, the camera sort of uh, moves around the place. You know, instead of keeping pointed at the ring. That they were showing that there was a full house there. Yeah. And who do I see walking into a box down on the end of the place but that heel husband of mine? Are you sure? Well, I... 
said before, I'd swear to it, but maybe... Well, it could have been some other guy. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, that's why I thought maybe you could help me find out. Well, what do you want me to do, Mrs. Madigan? And why? Oh, I was going to leave the doing up to you. And the reason why is because if he's in town, I'd get a lawyer to hit him with a court order and get some of that money they said he should send me, but which he don't. And I thought if Mickey Madigan was in town, Reed, we could make something big out of it. Well, he beat the law, you know. But as far as this city's concerned, he's still sort of a public enemy. Now, I thought maybe we could look over some of the pictures they took at the fights last night and see if they show anything. I doubt it. Most of them are action shots in the ring. I think if Madigan were there, the police on duty in the lobby would have seen him enter or leave the place. Mm, that heel could disguise himself as a snake and crawl in. And he likes his fights so much, he'd chance a brush with the law to see a set to like last night. Uh, you can take her over to the photo morgue if you say so, Reed. Well, let's all three of us go. Maybe we can find something. <laughs> Well, there you are. And that about completes what we have. And there wasn't a sign of him in any of them, was there? No. But that's on account of he wasn't sitting at the ringside. He was in a box at the end of the arena. Well, you've seen them all, Mrs. Madigan. Uh, Joe, there aren't any more pictures on the fight, are there? Uh, no, Mr. Reed, not on the fight. Uh, I do have a couple, though, taken in and outside Capote's dressing room. If you want to see those, they're right here. No, thank you, Joe. I don't about... No, but wait. We may as well look through them as long as we're here. Sure. Let's see if Joe. Yeah. Here you are. Well, this is no good. Now that. <laughs> what an eye that fellow has. And this shot outside the dressing hey, room. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Reed. That next one there. Let's see it. But what is it? What do you see? Look. That guy back there at the edge of the crowd, heading for the exit sign. Well, I can only see part of it. Well, that's all you can see of any of them. They're putting their coat collars up, it looks like. Well, don't forget it was cold last oh, night. Mr. Reed, Mr. Axe, that's him. That needle knows they're his. That's Vicky, all right, I know. You can't be sure in a picture that size, Mrs. Madigan. There are a lot of persons in it, too. Uh, Joe, take this picture, will you? And this other one, too. It's almost the same shot as the first. Give us the biggest blow-up you can on this one section of the picture. You see? Or I mark the circle of this pencil. There. Uh-huh. Now do it fast as you can. Right. And you, Axford, get Miss Kirby to give you whatever pics we have on Madigan in our file. Okay. We'll soon have an idea how right you are, Mrs. Madigan. Well, there you are, Mr. Reed. They come out very clear. Well, let's see, then. Yeah, there you are, Mrs. Madigan. Yeah, that's him. That's him, all right. It's see, in this other picture, right by the door. <laughs> that's him, all right, believe me. Hey, you know, she's right, Reed. Look at this one old shot here, in profile. He's a little hey, faster, do Mr. Reed. That guy right behind him. That... Believe me, that guy is Yaya Lazuli. Did you say Yaya Lazuli? Glory be, let me get a look. Oh, but he was deported. He's somewhere over on the well, Riviera. I know these lugs better than you, Mr. Reed. I was married to one of them. That's Yaya, for sure. A short time later, Britt Reed and Axford, bearing the blown-up pictures, were at police headquarters in Commissioner Higgins' office. What's the answer, Commissioner? You agree they're Madigan and Lazuli, don't you? Uh, yes, yes. This is, well, this is more than a surprise, Reed. It's in the nature of a shock. Because I can see you're more than right. More than right? Because that third man, the one a little behind Lazuli, that, Reed, is Daryl Brisson. You mean Pretty Boy? Yes, Pretty Boy Brisson. I had the pleasure of seeing him go to prison. And of seeing him put on a plane for Mexico when he got out a few years back. But there he is. A oh, foodly oodly dee. The three greatest racketeers of our time back in town here. And the police have never been aware of it. Reed, don't break anything on this story, will you? Let's see what we can find out first. Well, Reed, thanks to the telephone and the speed in which it connects you with Europe these days, we know this much. But none of those three crooks are where they're supposed to be. I think there's no doubt about it now. They're here in this town. Maybe that accounts for those recent killings. And the talk we've been hearing that the rackets were on their way in again. I can't understand, though, why the arena's management hasn't been able to trace the tickets. Well, we've only the approximate position of the box they occupied. Mrs. Madigan said that they... Well, go ahead. Higgins speaking. Oh, yes, Schultz. What have you got? Oh, yes? Yes? 
We'd better remember that. Trying to hold out, huh? I see. Good. What did you find? What? Oh, thanks. Yes, that's very important. Thanks. Keep following up. Well, the agency tried to hold out and say they didn't know who bought the tickets for those four boxes in that section Mrs. Madigan pointed to. But Schultz found out, didn't he? Yes. One of the clerks, he'll get fired probably, blurted out who got them. It was Phil Stefanos, Big Tom Morton's secretary. Reed, did you hear that? Morton. I told you time and time again that he was no different than any other politicians that ever took over that first and second war set up. Hold your horses, Axford. I think the three of us have discussed Tom Morton in the past. I think, too, we've agreed he's just as deep in the rackets as he was back in the 20s. Him and his charities. It is supposed to be doing good. Why, anybody can see the way he lives, he's got to be a crook. Well, we've seen how he lives, Axford, and we've seen how he works. But we've never been able to get anything on him. Well, the Treasury Department says he pays his taxes, so... Well, you're going to face him with this right away, aren't you, Commissioner? I most certainly am. I'm getting a couple of my men, and I'm going to ferret out Tom Morton right now. <laughs> Police interrogation of Tom Morton was handled by the big political boss with an air of outraged dignity. I told you about them. I bought four boxes and put them at the disposal of the men attending the convention of the Ancient Society of Camels as a gesture on the part of the city. I don't know who got them. And as most of the delegates went home last night or this morning, it'll probably take us a few days to make contact with them all and find out who got the tickets for three boxes. Let's do that. And you'll find when you check that there were four boxes used by them. And that the ghost you men saw in the fourth... Oh, you're going? Why don't you... <laughs> so they were seen, huh? That stupid Madigan and his prize fights. I should have known it. Hello, Phil. Now, listen hard. You filed things up last night. You did. Now, shut up. Tell the boys to stay where they are, and I'll join them tonight. We'll get the syndicate set up in a hurry. Get them out of town till things quiet down. Yeah. But, uh, we've got a character we'll have to bump. Pup Gandhi. That usher who let them in and out of the arena. <laughs> continue our story in just a moment. Partners, I can't think of anything I'd rather do right now than open up a refreshing ice-cold bottle of Orange Crush. Cooling, refreshing Orange Crush. It sparkles, it tingles, it makes you feel fresh again. Say, have you tried it yet? If you haven't, you're missing the most cooling, the most refreshing, the most delicious drink in the world. And listen, do you know why it's the most refreshing drink in the world? Do you know why Orange Crush is one drink that's actually good for you? It's because Orange Crush is one drink that's actually made with fresh oranges. Fresh, juicy, tree-ripened oranges. Yes, sir, real fresh fruit flavor and goodness. That's why it's the most refreshing, the most delicious drink in the world. And that's why you can drink all you want. Orange Crush is really good for you. Good for youngsters, good for grown-ups. So next time and every time you want a delicious, cooling, refreshing drink, be sure you ask for Orange Crush. But remember this, be sure you get the real thing. Orange Crush in the exclusive sunproof brown bottle. The bottle that keeps light out, keeps flavor in. If it isn't in that famous brown bottle, it just isn't Orange Crush. It's O-R-A-N-G-E-C-R-U-S-H. The most refreshing drink in the world. Orange Crush. Now back to the Green Hornet. Brett Reed turned to his secretary, Eleanor Case. That was Commissioner Higgins. And judging by your end of the conversation, he didn't do so well. No, Morton won't admit to anything, not even distribution of the tickets. There's some story about sending them to the Camel Convention for distribution to delegates on the last day. And no other information about those three gangsters? Not a thing. They questioned all the attendants at the arena, too. Nobody admits even the trio come in or go out. The usher in charge of the section said they weren't in the box when the semifinals started. 
But he got so interested in that and the big fight that he never did look to see if the box was filled later. I think I'll call Higgins again and find out who that usher was. Just in case we want to follow up later. At home that evening, Brett Reed was walking into his room, followed by Keto, his faithful valet. These men didn't come to this city just to see that fight last night. There's the odor of brackets in the air of late, Kato. And it comes to you by way of your newspapers if you read what's been happening lately. And uh, you think these men are behind what goes on? If they're not, they're the kind who'd take over from any newcomers. I don't know what the answers are at all. But the Green Hornet's going to try and find one or two. Oh, uh, we do uh, nipping in pudding, is that it? <laughs> Something like that. So first, the Green Hornet will go and visit that fellow who ushered in the section where that box of Madigan's is located. Well, uh, what is his name? Where he lives? His name's George Doherty, and he lives in a flat at 991 East Jackson. That very run-down neighborhood. Which is good. People won't notice us so readily in places like that. And another thing, the doors in those flats open easier than others. If you've got everything, kiddo, let's get going. <laughs> George Doherty was frightened into a panic by the sudden dramatic appearance of the Green Hornet. Within a few minutes, cowed by the Hornet's threats, he was gibbering his tale of the previous evening. I didn't want to lose my job, because I would if the boss knew I went out before the fights were over. I took the ten bucks Pop gave me and went out like he said. He come down from the gallery where he works and he covered for me. I told the cops what I did because both me and Pop would have been canned if the boss knew. So this fellow Pop gave you ten dollars to leave your post. Why? Why'd he do it? I tell you, I don't know. Ten bucks is ten bucks, and I just ankle out like he is. Come back after the fights to get my salary. Yeah, you would. Now, come clean. Where does this Pop now, live? Don't touch me. I... I'll tell you. His name's Pop Gandy. That's all I know him by. He lives a few blocks from here. At 1031 Fair. The Green Hornet had left Keto in the Black Beauty on the corner of the street in which Pop Gandy's house was located. Oh, Mr. Brid, what happened? Let's get out of here in a hurry. Pop Gandy is dead. What? His body is still warm. And I saw the man who murdered him running out just as I came in. Golly, I see that man run out just as you go through alley before. Was he man who wore a check cap? Yes, but neighbors came in and saw me looking at the old man's body when I found it. I had to go through the window and down the fire escape. Where'd the man the check cap go, did you see? Oh, sure thing, Mr. Brady. He jumped in car. Car start, uh, stop at corner for traffic light. Then turn right under viaduct. We follow him? Uh, if you can, certainly. The car can't be too far away. I know it if I see it. We catch it. Don't worry. We're going out in the country now, Cato. Evidently, they don't suspect we're behind them. No, sir. The way they slow down prove that. Uh, maybe we call police now and tell them? Not till we know where they're leading us, Cato. If Pop Gandy was killed because he might say he saw Madigan in his crowd well, last that's night... that's why he's killed, I think. So do I. If that's the case, the killer may be leading us to them. And if they ordered his death, we can't take the time to stop and call Higgins now, Cato. Not till we're sure of what's taking place and where they're going. Oh, yes, I know that. Besides, if people see Green Hornet run away from place where Pop is killed, uh, maybe Hornet get blamed. That's the other and selfish reason for my not wanting to lose him, Cato. We'll have to clear the Green Hornet in case he is blamed. And he will be. But they pick up speed again. We must too, Mr. Brett. Wherever it is, they lead us. I'll handle the situation at that point. While I do, you call the police, direct them to the place, and then come back for me. There were four men seated around the table in the living room of a cottage, which was located in a woods off the main road. Seated at the head of the table was Big Tom Morton. To his immediate right and left were Yaya Lazuli and Pretty Boy Brisson. Opposite him was Mickey Madigan. Each was reading one of the many sheets of paper in front of them. Morton was talking. So you see, boys, the setup is fair to every one of you. Now, if there's anything in your copies of our arrangement that needs changing, let's do it now. If not, I think it'll be a good idea if we get out to Bayview so we can get aboard that yacht. Uh, yeah, what is it, Yaya? Wait a few minutes, Morton. I've got to bring a good report back to my partners. If we're going to handle the machines and the handbooks down south, why don't we get a bigger cut on the hotels you're buying up? Well, that's easy, uh, yeah. I'm shelling out plenty of extra money to get these places. 
my own money. Sounds right, Yaya. Don't you think so, Brisson? Yeah, look, I'm getting my extras on the dope. And you, Mickey, you're getting your extras on the numbers. We all have our own pet rackets. We should get extras. So, yeah, yeah, if Tom can handle these hotels the way he wants... I'll put in the best gaming rooms in the country. We'll get floor shows to bring the people okay, in. Okay, okay, I was just saying. I've given years of thought to this, boys. And you'll find these agreements we just signed short. You'll uh, have to stay undercover again for a while. And I want to see that Kaufman Bergen fight out at Olympic Stadium tomorrow night. You and your fights, Mickey. That's why we got to hustle out of town in such a hurry now. What do you mean? If I didn't know that you... Boys, boys, no debating. Let's get this thing to a close, huh? Hey, who's that? Put your gun away, Brisson. That's Phil. What's he doing here? I told him to come here. He took care of the old guy tonight. <laughs> we hope. I hate to see an old guy like that get him. What? Hi, boys. Hello, boys. Hi, Hello, Phil. Well, Phil? Perfect, boys. We croaked him. That's <laughs> good. You hear that, boy? Yeah, it's all right. Were you the cannon on this job, Phil? No, Mickey. Finger did the job. But when you hear this, did you have the radio on tonight during the past hour? No way. What's so funny? It came over the air. We were listening to the car on the way out. They're blaming Pop shooting on the Green Hornet. People saw him come out of Pop's after doing it. What, the Green Hornet? Yes, the Green hey, Hornet. Hey, what Hornet? Hey, if you move your hands, any of you, you'll join Pop Gandy. Hey, where'd he come from? Hey, he came through the bedroom window. I don't think that gunman of yours will sneak in on me. I took care of him out in the car just now. Hey, why have you come here, Hornet? To show you up for what you are, Morton. And to round up these public enemy friends of yours. Hey, what do you mean, Hornet? You want to muscle in? Shut up, Yaya. Oh, don't, Yaya. Tell me more. I do want to muscle in. I want to take over. Ah, look at these papers here. Oh, that's the setup we got. As we're doing, he's going to talk. Brisson swung and hit him flush on the jaw. You, you talk too much, you won't. When Brisson's arm came back, the Green Hornet's gas gun had gone off in Pretty Boy's face. That's for you, Brisson. The gas will keep you quiet. As the Green Hornet spoke, the three men suddenly fanned out and converged on the Hornet. Madigan was first. Only gas, no bullets. I'll take that gun, Hornet. Take it. Madigan went down. Big Tom Morton closed in on the Green Hornet, ducking beneath the gun and grabbing him about the waist with his arm. I've got him, Phil. Take his gun. But the Green Hornet's arms and hands were still free as Phil Stefanos rushed from the side. The Hornet's fingers closed on the gun trigger, sending a spray of gas into the gangster's face. Where are you? you... I got him. Now I can concentrate on you, Morton. I'll welcome the chance to knock you around a bit before the police come for you. The Green Hornet's knees bent, and with a judo trick, he brought his arms up beneath those of Tom Morton and sent the giant of the man crawling backwards. I'm going to use my fist, not gas, to put you to sleep. Now stand up and fight. That's it. You dirty. And here. How do you like that? And this one is for killing an old man, Pop Candy. Oh, my, my jaw is broken. Your writing hand better not be. Get up again. I said get up. Yes, I am, I am. I'll walk over that table. That's it. Now sit down. I'll start writing a confession. One that includes the story of how Pop Candy was killed. If you don't... Now don't hit me again already. I'll tell everything. About the boys, too, only to... Go ahead. We have only a minute. While you're doing that, I'll go through these papers there on that table. Uh, go ahead. As Morton wrote a confession, naming the man Finger as Pop Gandy's murderer, the Green Hornet heard the police car stop in front. His eyes blazed above his mask as he read the criminal contracts signed by the racketeers. So this is it. Oh, thank God, that's been nipped in the bud. Are you finished? Yes, yes, yes. Where are you going? I'm going to be back here by the bedroom so I can get away when the cops come in. Read that to me. I don't have it. Okay, okay. Don't come back. I'll read it. Finger Flanders was the one who shot Pop Yandy. He, he did it because I told him to... On it. Where are you? He's gone. Yes, but the police are here. I heard that confession, Morton. Don't try to tear it up. Come on in, men. Who's that moving, Lazuli? That guy in the floor is reaching. Oh, get him. I got him. Oh. That'll hold you, Lazuli. All right, take this man and that paper in his hand. All right, come on, you. The Green Hornet was trying to free me. Come on. Come we'll on. see about that. He was here. Must have gone through the other room. All right, go after him, a couple of you. Right. Rest, tie up this bunch. Right, now, let's see what's in this mess of papers here.
Judy Malligan was in Britt Reed's office shortly after the Sentinel Extra hit the street next morning. You see, I was right. I did see him on the television. And the good thing you did, Mrs. Madigan. You got the police started on something that prevented this country from being taken over by the biggest crime syndicate ever assembled. Those contracts they signed have never been equaled for criminal audacity. Uh... Yeah, maybe so, but I don't care about that. What I want to know is, how do I get some dough from that heel husband of mine now that he's in the clink? I think you wait a long time, my dear woman. Well, Mr. Reed. Uh, yes, Miss Case. Commissioner Higgins just called. There's no doubt now about Finger Flanders shooting Pop Gandy. When he was shown Morton's confession, he thought they were trying to railroad him. So he told the truth. And with the hope of leniency, he told of a lot of other killings that have taken place lately. It was all Big Tom Morton's doing. So he could take over the small gangs and have them ready for the syndicate. Well, that should send Martin to a warmer place than the cell he's in now. And it clears the Green Hornet, too, doesn't it? Of Pop Gandy's death, I mean. Oh, yes. He must have gotten there right after Pop was killed. Ah, uh, he must have, must he? I have me grave doubts about that. I will bet he was the one that thought of getting those racketeers back into this country and into the driver's seat again. He was too smart to put his name on paper, that's all. He don't sign anything. Well, which reminds me, Reed... Will you sign this expense voucher for me? It's for taxi fare out to the country looking for the green harlot. Hornet story for today. Another exciting story brought to you by the most refreshing drink in the world, ice cold orange crush. It sparkles, it tingles, it makes you feel fresh again. Now, a special announcement. Please listen carefully. Beginning next Sunday, June 29th, the Green Hornet will come to you on a new day and a new time. The new day will be Sunday. So remember, beginning next Sunday, June 29th, tune in the exciting adventures of the Green Hornet each Sunday afternoon. For the time when it will be heard in your locality, consult the radio columns of your local newspaper. This program is a recorded feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. This copyrighted feature originated in Detroit, and all characters and incidents used are fictitious. The Green Hornet is brought to you by the most refreshing drink in the world, ice-cold Orange Crush. Remember, listen for the Green Hornet again next Sunday afternoon when you will hear the story of danger entitled Diamonds and Murder. And now till next Sunday afternoon, so long from Orange Crush. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.